Reactor. Roll off. The Dark Souls series was left in a rocky formation the last time we saw it in 2014. Sure, 2 was good and all, but it lacked the creativity from Hidetaka Miyazaki that made it so appealing. Oh, I'm not talking about that Miyazaki, I'm talking about this one. There we go. After skipping out on Dark Souls 2 to work on Bloodborne, Miyazaki has made his glorious return in Dark Souls 3, and it shows in this glorious cornucopia of death. You begin by creating your character and choosing from a variety of different classes. I've only had experience being a knight specializing in heavy armor. After going through an army of Skeletors, you arrive at your first boss within the first five minutes. Heh, <laughs> it's the first boss, how bad could it be? I'm surprised I didn't say this sooner, but in typical Dark Souls fashion, you are going to be dying. A lot. It's kind of what the franchise is known for in case you are unaware. Due to the enemy's adaptive AI system, even the weakest of foes can put up a fight if you lose your footing or are not paying attention. Not to say the game sets out to make your life miserable, it forces you to want to play better and try things from a different angle. This is something I've always admired about the Souls series. Nothing ever feels unfair, and you are always in control. When I die, I blame my own lack of intuition rather than the game itself. This immense level of difficulty to beat a boss or area gives me more satisfaction than any other game has to date. Mom, guess what? I finally beat that Dark Souls 3 boss I was talking about. No, I'm not moving out yet. Hello? Whenever you beat an enemy, you acquire souls which can be used to level up your stats and buy gear in the hub area known as the Firelink Shrine. There you can also sell items and gear for souls and up your arsenal for some added ferocity in combat. Well, minor ferocity. Upgrading your character and equipment certainly help, but not to the extent that you might think. Don't get me wrong, it'll still assist heavily in beating certain areas, but to say you can upgrade yourself into the ultimate warrior is wishful thinking. This ain't Fallout, buddy. You can't just sneak and lockpick your way to victory. Here, you gotta work for it. The various locations of Dark Souls 3 are eerie and reek with mystery. As haunting as they are, the enemies they hold are even worse. Cleverly designed and similar to the enemies in Bloodborne, they all vary in size, strength, and abilities. I just got hugged to death. Dark Souls, everybody. The levels are designed in a linear fashion with areas worth revisiting, and if you look hard enough, you can find secrets that will give you an upper hand in the heat of battle. The story in Dark Souls 3 is cryptic and told vastly through item descriptions, pretty much like every other game in the series. NPCs don't help much either, as they already assume you know what's going on. Which your character probably does, but you don't. While the main plot is loosely connected to the last two games, the smaller details can be left up to player interpretation. Now I've been playing the PC port of this game for about two weeks with the day one patch, and I can confirm that optimization is pretty bad. I'm running the game with an AMD FX8350 processor and an R9390 graphics card, and I can barely get above 30 frames per second. It's even worse when you're in dense areas. I tested the game on low settings and I only got an increase of about 5 frames. There was even a point in time where I accidentally had the graphics set to low for about an hour and I couldn't tell the difference. However, there was a patch released recently for the review copies, which has improved the performance, so the footage you've been seeing is the game without the modified patch. Thankfully, those technical flaws did not hold me back from enjoying Dark Souls 3. I'll admit, the only Souls game I've played before this was Bloodborne, so that was the only game I could compare it to, and I was incredibly satisfied. If you've been a fan of Dark Souls since the beginning, this latest installment still features the gut-wrenching, heart-stopping, adrenaline-fueling difficulty your black, soulless heart desires. 
And it is with that that I give Dark Souls 3 five atoms out of five. How's it going, Reactorites? Thank you so much for watching Nerd Reactor's review of Dark Souls 3. Be sure to check out more reviews on the main channel and my very own channel, Ferris Wheel Productions. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified when we post a new review, reaction, or cosplay music video. With that, I'm Joey Ferris. This is Nerd Reactor. Roll out.